Hi guys, if it's Tuesday, it's Down in Dirty Woods Craft. Stay with me. Okay guys, today we're going to talk about two different things. One, I mentioned this book in my last Down and Dirty, and I had several people saying what was the book, so let's look at the book, okay? What this is, of course, let Blackie get his eyes on because he is old and he is blind. Sorry about the aircraft. Okay, it is called Campfires and Cooking, Boy Scouts of America Service Library. And this one is copyright 1932. All right, what it basically does is an extension of their teaching on campfire. And it shows how to do even more in-depth about fire building, how to start fires, different kinds of fires, cooking fires, and really good pictures of different styles of fire. Um, and ways to do, you know, fire lays things like that i got this off of amazon i think it was and you can still get these this one came out there's that picture that i showed you before but it's various how to cooks and it's more on recipes and things like that you know reflector ovens all kinds of stuff it's just an interesting good little book now it is here we are and it is 38 degrees in my beloved south it's been cold and wet for about the past two weeks off and on. Every time I get a day off, it's cold and wet. And as I mentioned in a video, I've been off and on with the flu, both me and my wife. And at my age and my health, I don't need to get out in it a lot. There's a, you know, risk of pneumonia and stuff. So, I've been having to kind of pay it, play it kind of close to the vest a little bit. But what I want to talk about today is about being out in the cold layers that's the secret so today's down and dirty tip is layering now right now I am wearing multiple layers all the way at the base of it I am wearing a cotton t-shirt if it was going if I was going to be out here for extended amount of time say overnight this would be a poly pro or some form of uh, wicking uh, under material such as military poly pro long john etc Next up, I have a wool five-button military um, sweater on. Over that, I have a heavy shirt. Over that, I have a hoodie. And over that, I have a rain jacket. Now, that's five layers. On my, my legs, same idea, three layers. Multiple layers are warmer than a thick, big layer. The reason for that is, as your body generates the heat, that heat, by contact, is spread to the next layer. It then has to fight to go to the next layer, to the next layer, to the next layer. If you're only wearing one pair of blue jeans, all it does is heat that material and the material radiates it out to space. It's gone. So multiple layers, like multiple locks on the door, make it where the body has to fight to get that heat out. Now, if you dress correctly with multiple layers, you also run the risk of overheating. So that's where you need multiple layers where you can peel or you can vent. Notice I said this is a hoodie, this is a shirt. All these can be opened. So therefore, I can vent. Now the wool sweater that's on the inner layer cannot. But therefore, as I warm up, I can open up and keep opening up to this inner layer to vent so I don't sweat. So if I'm on the trail or whatever, as I'm moving, I'm probably going to be generating enough heat. I will be fine. But when I stop because I'm hunting or I'm fishing or I'm doing some activity where I have to be stationary, I'm going to want to add back in layers. As I begin to cool, I start zipping back up. I start adding it back. And therefore, I am insulating myself by multiple layers. If I'm wearing the correct layers of clothing, and notice that that hoodie, I can bring this up 
over my head and still put my hat on when it gets really cool tonight and have warmth on my head beyond just the hat. The hat being wool, it insulates. Now, I'm going to be camping out. I am dressed appropriately for the atmospheric condition. So therefore, when I lay down, you hear the guys talk about, oh, I can do it with a wool blanket. That is correct. If I am wearing adequate clothing for the environment, adding a blanket is just another little layer on the top to help hold heat. It doesn't have to be a great big thick anything. Because I'm going to have a fire, I'm going to have a heat reflector, and I'm going to have a tarp. I'm going to be up off the ground or I'm going to be insulated. There are two ways to get through the cold of the night. Radiation or insulation. Those are your two choices. Either you're so well insulated you're holding the heat that you have or you are absorbing heat from radiated, a fire, hot rocks, a hot water bottle, a geothermal, a hot bed, something that's radiating heat to you. Those are your two actual choices, radiation or insulation. That's it. So, in conclusion, what I'd like to point out is in these cold, wet days of winter, it's looking like here in the south we're going to have a cold, wet winter. And we've got a camp out coming up with the Southeast Bushcraft on the first part of February that I nicknamed it. No one's given the official name, guys, but I call it Frozen Foot because I used to go to an event long ago. And it's going to focus on winter. That's going to be the focus of this event, sharing ideas on how to stay warm, how to stay prepared for cold weather camping. Little ideas, and of course we'll be videotaping it. And I'll be videotaping any presentations or whatever to give to you. So you got that to look forward to. Please leave any questions or comments below. And as always, I appreciate y'all watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Woodscraft saying safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.